Well, good morning. Good morning. We're glad that you are here, that you've joined us online. If you are out in the lobby, uh, if you would come on in and find your seats, we're going to go ahead and get started this morning. Um, and just like the first service, just like every week, we're going to get started the best way we know how, just taking time to worship the Lord uh, and to sing praise to his name. So if you are able, would you stand with us um, as we... We just sing and we worship the Lord because he's good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. From every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. We worship you. to the Lord. Sing, Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. People from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship.
for singing with us so far. You all may be seated. Good. All the time. He is good all the time, and all the time he is good. Amen. And uh, thank you for coming. I know there's some out in the lobby. Make your way in. Uh, we're excited to be here this morning. We've had a great time this week. And if this is your first time visiting with us, man, we want to just first of all tell you thank you for being with us today. You've caught us at a very different service. This is our uh, culmination of our missions revival. And uh, so it's a little bit different. But uh, I pray that you will be blessed, that you'll be encouraged. But most of all, as we consider the mandate to carry the gospel all around the world, I pray that each and every one of us will be challenged to do just that. Amen? And uh, that we'll be missionaries here in our own right as we send missionaries out all around the world, that we would be faithful to do what God has called us to do right here in Northern Virginia. And so uh, we've had a busy week. It's been a long week. And, uh, and uh, I just give God the glory for how he's worked through every step of the way. And uh, uh, at this time, some of you are saying, I don't know what's going on. I want to introduce you to our missionary guests. We'll do an abbreviated introduction for each one of them. But I'd like to ask you to do something. This is different. You know, you're like, I've never done this before. I'd like to ask you to stand with me once again and uh, put your hands together as we welcome our missionary guests this year. Our first missionary is... Uh, sent out from the Baptist Bible Fellowship to the country of Nicaragua. He has a burning passion, honestly, to reach children and families with the love and the truth that Jesus saves. And uh, I want to ask you to put your hands together and welcome missionary Tyler Carlton once again. Amen, Tyler. He said he's a, uh, he's a 10-year-old in a 6'4 body. Amen. And so he's going to tell kids about Jesus. Secondly, we have uh, a young couple that the Lord has really honestly uniquely prepared to go into the country of France. Uh, we've said it all week, France is really a modern day Nineveh. And uh, God has prepared this couple. I I'm so excited that they've been with us this week. Would you put your hands together for Jonathan and Priscilla Loss? <laughs> Bonjour. I, I think he said bonjour. Is that what you said, bonjour? I'm, I, this is my first lesson in French. Okay. All right. It's good to have them with us in this next couple. Really been in ministry, as, I've, as you've learned over the week. They've been in ministry in local New Testament church settings, Oklahoma, Texas, and Missouri, uh, for over 40 years. And uh, I keep on uh, saying they are still in their prime. And, uh, and so God is, <laughs> there, amen, and from back there, God is, uh, uh, they've been uniquely prepared as well, <laughs> and uh, God is uh, calling them to reach out to extend the reach of the gospel, and they will be going to oversee uh, the Global Missionary Clearing House in uh, Manila, Philippines, working and training new ministers and missionaries, and uh, I'm excited to welcome, would you put your hands together for Don and Becky Bear, Don and Becky Bear. Amen. As I, as I told you, they're still in their prime. <laughs> all right, all right. That's like the kiss cam at a stadium when the wife doesn't want to participate. That's like, that's like, oh, babe, the kiss cam. And there she's like, don't, don't, no, 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 I'm a very private person. All right, so it's good to have the Bears with us. And then last, uh, certainly not least, uh, we're blessed to be able to have our missionary partners for over 30 years now in a creative access nation, and we are live on the Internet, so I'll not say the name of the country, but would you put your hands together for Chris and Annie White? Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. You may be seated. Again, I told you it was a little bit different today. You're like, what is going on in this place? There's a lot of uh, God is good, and we're clapping for missionaries. You know, we ought to clap for missionaries. We'll, we'll, go, we'll go home, and we'll watch a TV and clap for those that are throwing a little pigskin around. We ought, to, we ought to be clapping and celebrating what God's doing through our missionary partners all, all around the world. And so I'm very thankful to have them here 
uh, this morning. And we're going to continue our service now. And if you missed it Wednesday night, we bring it back every year uh, twice. And that is our Parade of Nations. God bless you. a call going out across the land in every nation, a call to all who swear allegiance to the cross of Christ, a call to true humility, to live our lives responsibly, to deepen our to the cross at any price. Let us then be sober, moving only in the Spirit, as aliens and strangers in a hostile foreign land. The message we repentance and forgiveness the offer of salvation to the dying race of man By the passion of the flame, spilling light unsparingly throughout a darkened room. Let us burn to know him deeper than our service flaming bright. We'll radiate his passions and blaze with holy.
The gospel you see is fundamentally an announcement about what Jesus has done for us that is a call for a response of repentance and belief. This is a gospel about individuals created in the image of God just like you and me. There are 6,536 unreached people groups with no access to the gospel. I don't want you to hear that. It's a statistic, by the way. Those aren't numbers. Those are individuals, just like you and me. We have the same needs, wants, hurts, and desires that you and I have. These people are somebody's mother, somebody's father, somebody's child, somebody's brother, somebody's sister. They're made in the image of God just like you and me. Where would you be without Jesus? The answer is you'd be in exactly the place that 2.6 billion people are without you and me. The message of the gospel is that Christ has satisfied the full wrath of God against our sin. And he has done so for the peoples of every nation on earth. But it does them no good if they never hear about it. If you have experienced the gospel, there is no way that you can look at a world that is headed to hell and not care, not move, and not offer your life and say, God, here am I, send me. I think that ought to rearrange our priorities now we think about what we do. On Jesus' name, when darkness veils his loving face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. His oath, his covenant, his blood, support me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. When he shall come, amen, with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. Your missionaries this morning understand that our world is building their life on sinking sand. And we have the wonderful news of the gospel of Jesus Christ that they can put their life in, but they need to hear the news. Amen? They need for someone to go. They, they need for someone to proclaim. They need someone to send them. They need someone that will support them with their prayers and their finances that the name of Jesus Christ can go around the world. Many of your missionaries that are here this morning Two things are true. They choose not to believe in Jesus, or they've never heard the name of Jesus. And you and I know from Scripture that there is no other name among heaven given among men whereby people must be saved, and that is the name of, of Jesus. Jesus himself said what? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father except he come through me. Well, there's one God. Amen? And one mediator between God and man, and that is the man, Christ Jesus. And church, that's why we go, and that's why we give. We have the hope of the world. This morning, we're going to talk about your finances. And everyone I talk to sometimes, you know, Pastor, those are kind of personal things. Can I just say to you, it's all God stuff. Amen? It all belongs to him, and you and I can take our finances, listen now, and we can invest them in the eternity of an individual. My Bible tells me that all of us, God has planted in the heart of man eternity, and you and I are going to spend eternity somewhere. And the Bible says there's only two places. There's a place that we call heaven. And I love preaching about heaven because heaven just seems to get sweeter all the time. But there's a reality of a place that's called hell, eternal separation from God. And it's the responsibility of us going to heaven to tell those that are not going to heaven how to get there. Amen? I don't save them. I don't have that kind of power. But what I do have 
is a message that I can preach because it does have the power, amen? For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the, the power, the dynamite of God that can change the hearts and lives of individuals. Each of us this morning, we have a responsibility to go to those around us. You are a missionary to your world, to your sphere of influence. This church needs to be a missionary church to this region of the country to to share the good news of, of Jesus Christ. But God has called some to leave this place and go somewhere else to share the good news of Jesus Christ. And, and we must, first of all, pray for them. And I don't think there's a missionary this week hasn't talked about the importance of prayer. We need your prayer, God's protection, God's wisdom, God's watching over us. But we also need your finances. We need your finances to help us get there to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Now, to some this morning, it's maybe a new concept, this idea of, of faith promise missions. What is it? What is Faith Promise Missions? Well, it's how Battlefield Baptist supports missions around the world. You give of your tithe each week, belongs to God, amen. It all belongs to Him, but I acknowledge that by giving a tenth to Him, and that helps support the work here. It helps support what this church does here in this local area. Then we believe God's call is the church then to go beyond that. And give a, give a faith promise offering, an offering of faith. It's a promise, a, a commitment I don't necessarily make to my church, but I make to God. God, if you'll bless me, I want to give this this year to missions. And, and this church here takes those finances, and guess what they do? They give it to missionaries. I used to tell my church, you give it, and we'll give it away. Because we're going to give it away to missionaries uh, that want to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Here's what Paul told the church at Corinth. Every man, according to as he is purposed in his heart, let him give. Not grudgingly, nor necessity, because God loves a cheerful giver. So I try to challenge my church that in giving, giving cheerfully. That word cheerfully means hilariously. And so here's what we did one Sunday night, and, and I did it a couple times, and it kind of threw people off a little bit. I, I said, everyone, I want you to have to give, give in the offering this morning, so, or this evening. If you don't have any money, ask your neighbor for some money. And I'm a married man, so I got no money, so I go to the source, amen? I went to my wife and said, hey, baby, can I have some money? And she gave me a little bit of money. And so I said, I want everybody to have some change in their hand, something in their hand. And so it was kind of fun watching people around them going, hey, you got any money? Can you, can you help me out here? And doing that. Here's what I asked them. I said, here's what I want you to do. I'm going to pass the plate in a moment. And we do, I want, you to, I want you to laugh as you give your offering. And it started slow. Because people said, our preacher's weird. Have you ever noticed that most preachers are? Are you with me? We, we got to be. It helps. And do that. So as, as they began to give, they, it caught on. And about a third of the way through the auditorium, people really got into it. Ha, 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 ha. And they put their money in the offering. And before long, we were laughing at those who were given. And, and by the time we got to the end, everyone was laughing and, and giving the offering. And I think that's the way it should be. We come to God's house, and we have the privilege, amen, to give back to God. Because God has been so good to us. We give cheerfully as a church. Spiritually, the Bible teaches us, give to your local church first. That tithe belongs to God. God, I honor you with this because you've blessed me. Now you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna let me live on 90%. And as you give on 90%, then God, I want to give, give some to missions. Lord, what can I do this year to missions? For some, it may be a budgeted item. Uh, Becky and I are budgeted people, and so we sit down, okay, what can we do? God, by grace and by faith, we just want to budget this year uh, towards missions, and as you bless, we're going to give that, and God, if we can't, we'll give more than that along the way, to God to be a blessing to those around us, but it is a matter of faith. God, I'm going to trust you, I'm going to trust you, not only that I'll have a job this year, not only that I'll, I'll meet my needs this year, but God will be able to give this year. Here's what Becky and I found throughout the years of giving. We found that often it wasn't that God gave us more money, but I was always amazed at what we had, how far it went. Didn't go to the hospital or the doctor as much this year as we did last year. The cost of this went down. That vehicle went another year and kept on going, and God just kept continuing blessing in different areas of our lives that we could, get, could continue to, to help missionaries uh, around the world. And, and so today your church is going to ask you, uh, what you can do. You're going to get a card here towards the end of the service. So we're going to ask you, and many of you have already been praying about it, God, what can I do this year 
as a step of faith to give to missions. For some, God's going to ask you to increase this year. Every year, Becky and I would pray. I'd say, God, can, can we get more this year? God, can you, can you increase my faith? And then I would challenge people in the church that have never participated. For some, this is a new concept, this idea of faith promise missions. And it's going to be a step of faith for you this year to say, God, what can I do along the way? And, and, and today I'm kind of ashamed of myself, Pastor, but I, I used to challenge our church, and I would say to them, just give up a Starbucks a week and give it to missions. And then I met some missionaries in Cambodia, in Thailand, in Vietnam. And I saw their sacrifice, and I was ashamed. I thought, man, what wimpy faith you had. God's called us to make a difference and impact in the lives of those who don't know Jesus. And church, you, you, you've had an impact. You are having an impact. But I'm kind of waiting to see what God does, amen, down the road in impacting lives for Jesus Christ. I told the church Wednesday night of a man at our church, Don Brown. Don Brown loved missions and was a mission man, and he uh, gave to missions every year. One year he came to me and said, Pastor, I'm, I'm, my mind's kind of checking out on me, and, 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 but I don't, want to, I don't want to give up my mission giving, so this year can I give all my missions at one time for the year? And so what do you say as a pastor? You know, I don't want to say, yeah, do that. I, I want it to be his decision. But I said, Brother Brown, just do whatever you want to do, what's best for you. So sure enough, he told me, he said, I, I wrote a check for the year. I've given it, given it to the church for missions. Well, a year, year passed, next year, Mission Conference comes along, Mission Revival comes along, and, and, and he comes up to me, he says this to me, he said, I, I just got to confess to you, Pastor, I, 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 wrote, I wrote a check for my entire year last year, remember? And I said, yeah, you told me you were going to do that. He said, well, I did that, and then I forgot that I wrote that check. And so all year long, I've been given to missions on a weekly basis. And you know what? I've not missed it. Virginia Jacobs, the lady in our church, lived on just a, that social security check. That was all she had going on. And so one year she said, I decided to step out by faith and say, I'm going to give this much to missions. And she said, I thought God impressed it upon me, but she said, I got no idea how I was going to do it. So she came in one day to the church. She was just so excited. I, this, this, this faith thing is exciting. And she said, Pastor, I made a commitment this year to missions, and I didn't know how I was going to do it. And I want you to know I haven't given anything to missions yet this year because I'm just kind of waiting for God to show up. And God showed up this week. And I said, well, what would God do? She said, my son gave me a new washer and dryer. I said, okay, well, good. I didn't know where she was going. So I sold my old washer and dryer, and guess what I sold it for? I sold it for my commitment missions this year. So I'm able to give my commitment this year. It's just, God's going to just do things you don't know about. It's just that idea of stepping out of faith. God doesn't move until we step. Amen? God says he's going to do it. I've got to step out by faith and do that. So, church, I want to challenge you. I think my wife said it, I think other missionaries said it, you can't outgive God. God's got a bigger shovel than you've got, okay? So you, you just give and, and, and watch what he does, and then one day when you get to heaven, listen, you send a missionary to France, and I want to say thank you for giving, because I, I accepted Christ. You sent this guy to Nicaragua, and I was just a kid. He shared, he shared the gospel with me, and I got saved. Thank you for sending a missionary to Nicaragua. You sent an old couple, still in their prime, <laughs> to the Philippines. And they helped train some missionaries that, that went into my country. And I never knew that Jesus ever existed. Thank you. Thank you for giving. Because I found Jesus Christ because you were faithful. Let me pray for you, church. Father, thank you for a church that loves missions. And it has for years. But God, the job's not done. Great Commission hasn't been completed. We just need to keep moving forward. So I ask you to bless this church. God, bless their faith. May they step out this year, God, and do far more uh, because you're an abundant God. You're, you're an ever-giving God to us uh, to see the, the good news of Jesus Christ go around the world. And we pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, church.
sinner was plunged beneath the flood and God saved. Since then I walk in forgiveness. All of my guilt was erased. The chains of the past are broken at last. I got saved. Oh, I got saved. I'm undone by the mercy of Jesus. I'm undone by the goodness of the Lord. I'm restored and made it right. He got a hold of my life. I've got Jesus. How good I want. lines in that song that I just want to like sit in kind of just chew on for a really long time um, but there's one there's one that we were talking about as a choir that someone in our choir pointed out that's just really really good and, and it's the line just past halfway through it says his will is stronger and that's why I got saved and that, just that idea that, man, I'm so thankful that, that the will of God is stronger than my will, because if it was yes. up to me, yes. like I would be nowhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'd be sitting on the couch, eating Doritos, <laughs> doing nothing. Yeah, yeah. And it's the will of God that as I surrender overcomes my will, and begins to work in me to lead me to do what he has called me to do, to lead me to other people. And that's that, like, that's the, I think, part of the crux of missions, right, is that we've been called to go, but on our own, none of us are going to go. 
Like, I don't have it within me to say, I, I, I'm, if you weren't here at 9 a.m., Jonathan was talking and you missed it. Uh, but like, I don't have it within me to be unreasonable, to be sacrificial and to just love other people the way Jesus loved. Like, that's, I, I don't possess that in me. But it's God's will that in missions just takes over. And man, I'm glad he does. <laughs> and so as we continue to worship, we've been singing this song for a while, for, for the past couple weeks, and we're gonna sing it again. Because what a better prayer in missions than to ask the Holy Spirit to do what only he can do. To say, God, I need your will to be stronger in me. I need you to move and do things that I can't do on my own. So if you are able, would you stand again as we continue to worship? And really, we just sing this prayer to the Lord to ask him to move in us. with power into the world. Oh, Holy Spirit, move in our hearts, fill us with fire and love for the world. Singing, oh, Holy Spirit, move in our hearts, send us with power into the world oh holy spirit move in our hearts fill us with fire and love for the world and we are gathered in your name with expectancy and faith we are waiting we are waiting boldness to proclaim all the wonders of your grace we are ready we are ready oh holy spirit move in our hearts send us with power into the world oh holy spirit move in our hearts fill us with fire and love for the world your compassion for the lost love that sent you to the cross we receive it we receive it in Jesus you are worth it all no matter what the cost we believe it believe it. Oh, Holy Spirit, move in our hearts, send us with power into the world. Oh, Holy Spirit, move in our hearts, fill us with fire and love for the This room be shaken. Let our hearts be broken. Let your church awaken to your love. Let this room be shaken. Church awaken to your 
us with power into the world. Oh, Holy Spirit, move in our hearts. Fill us with fire and love for the guide us and, and you direct us in the way that you would have us to go. And, and God, I'm thankful that you love us enough to, to do that for us. Not just that you loved us so much as we were, but God, that you love us so much that you don't want us to stay the way we were. And God, as we, as we spend this whole weekend and the rest of today focused on missions, on your great commission that you not only gave the disciples, but gave all of us to go and make disciples in every nation. God, as, as our focus is, is on that, God, I pray that you would continue to stir our hearts and move in our hearts and that you would lead us once again lead us in, 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 in what we should give. God, that you would lead us in those places that you want us to go and to share the gospel. And, and God, I pray that you would consistently bring to mind those missionaries that we need to be praying for. God, we know your word says that we can't do anything without you. So we can't go, we can't pray, we can't give, we can't share the gospel. We can't do anything without you. So, God, we just look to you. As we transition now from a musical worship to the worship of the preaching and the hearing of your word, um, God, I pray that supernaturally you would remove all the distractions that might be on our minds right now, that we wouldn't be worried about what's coming later, that we wouldn't be worried about maybe what happened this morning. God, that you would help us to just be laser focused on the only thing that matters, which is you. 
God, that we might be open and receptive to what you want to communicate to us this morning. God, we look forward to seeing what you will do, not just in this next time, but in the rest of our service. We, we just can't wait to see you do what only you can do and, and really God, as we look forward to exercising faith, God, I pray that you would just begin to do things in us that can only be explained by the movement of your spirit. That we wouldn't be able to take any credit for what comes next, but that we might just be able to point and say, man, our God is good. It's in Jesus' powerful name that we pray. Amen. Thank you all for worshiping with us. You may be seated. Since 1989, you as Battlefield Baptist Church have had a part in the ministry and our lives. You've influenced us in a great way. And I won't tell you where we're going even though Brother Don blew it for me, he blew my cover. But you have had a part in our lives. You can see it out on the table. And uh, you have had a part in our lives for over 30 years. And Annie and I wanted to come back and just to say thank you. That's all. We don't know how to express it any more than just to say thank you. And uh, we have, it's been an honor to represent you. Um, you remember the old show, uh, Andy Griffith, and, uh, you know, Deputy Barney Fife. You guys deputized us to kind of represent you in Asia. And so it's been an honor to be able to uh, represent you there. And thank you for your faithfulness and your generosity. And I, I'm just uh, so glad to be able to be here this morning. Uh, we were way back with Pastor Skinner and uh, had a relationship with him, and, and now to uh, get to know your pastor, Brother Greg and Krista and their wife and your staff. And uh, before we came here, I could button my coat, and you've fed us so well. I'm not sure I can button it anymore. I want to thank you uh, so much for that. And uh, as uh, maybe some of these missionaries this morning will come back 30 years later and say thank you uh, for you supporting them. So... Um, you know, after 30 years being in the mission field and uh, being where we are, we can recognize a first-term missionary. The missionary just got there. Um, when the food comes, they sit down to eat. There's a bug in their food, and they get sick. They can't eat. They, they, just, they just can't eat. Now, the second year, they get their food, and there's a bug there. They just pick the bug out and continue eating. It's, it's okay. Then the third year, they get their plate of food. The bug's there. They eat it all. Bug and everything. <laughs> now the fourth year, they get their food. There's no bug and they feel ripped off. Hey, where's my bug? You know? That is a joke. And I really, I told that story at another church, and this lady said, I could never be a missionary. And, you know, I could never. We have not knowingly eaten bugs. So it, it is a privilege to be here. And uh, when they locked down, it started there in Asia. We um, start, we, I was always a member of a gym and kind of exercising, and I thought, okay, they locked down the gym. And so I, they have kind of an, like an Amazon there, and... So I bought some of these little things I could uh, do at home. And just as an illustration, I thought I would use this because I'm going to talk to you about exercising your faith. Because you're going to be called on to exercise your faith today. And in a way that uh, maybe this will be challenging to you. <laughs> Falling out here. And I just thought I'd uh, give you a visual illustration this morning. You know, it's hard to start exercising for me. Uh, it's hard. But afterward, you, are, you have a sense of, I did it. 
You know, it's accomplished. It's like kind of starting to mow the lawn. You know, I hate to mow the lawn, but afterward, I love looking at it. And uh, today, you get to exercise your faith. You're going to be indicating what God has just placed on your heart so that Battlefield can continue to support more missionaries. They'll know what the budget is. And I'm not sure of your motivation, but I get to motivate you just for a few minutes. And as I heard a story of a, a man sitting in a restaurant of a hotel, and uh, he was looking out the window and watching it snow. It was a heavy snow. And uh, he was a traveling salesman. And uh, he asked his server, he said, do you think tomorrow the roads will be open and, and uh, we can travel or they'll be shut down? And uh, the server said, well, that depends if you're on salary or commission. <laughs> and so I'm not sure what your motivation is today, but I just want to talk about why and how in exercising your faith. Why exercise? And uh, that is, of course, to get stronger. And Ephesians uh, chapter 6, verse 10, it says, uh, Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Now, why get stronger? So you can serve at a higher level. You might start with the small one, and then you progress to the, to the next one and the next one. And then the next one. You know, if you stay right here, it becomes too easy and it's boring. And then you move on to here. It's a little more challenging. I'm going to step out and do this. And then you move on to this one. And then you move on to this one. And God begins to help you get stronger, to serve at another level. You know, when I was uh, in a ninth grade, and uh, the, the movie Rocky came out. And uh, I put a poster up in my room and I said, I want to look like that guy. And since the ninth grade, I have been exercising. And uh, you can tell I'm not going to go to the NFL. But for me, I wanted to just stay fit and I wanted to get as strong as God would let me and have my health as long as I could. And uh, I remember uh, about 10 years ago, my kids were at Liberty. And uh, I, I took them out for some real food at Applebee's. And so we were in Applebee's. It was filled up. And it was just myself and my two older kids. And uh, there was an older lady who fell. And none of the workers wanted to touch her. They thought, oh, if she's hurt or I pick her up and they get hurt, there's going to be a lawsuit. And uh, we were kind of looking at that. Everyone in the restaurant was looking. And uh, they were like, should we call 911? And, and uh, she wasn't hurt, but she couldn't get up. And um, I said, I, I was telling my kids, I need to go over there and help her. And my kids were like, don't embarrass me, Dad. Don't embarrass us. But I went over there and I said, can I help you get up? She said, yes, I'm not hurt, but I'm not sure you could even pick me up. And I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> And uh, so I helped her up, and she thanked me, and she got on her way, and nobody was going to help her. And, and uh, I, you know, I wanted to go to the next level. I want God to use me at the next level and the next level and to continue using the uh, strength and the exercising my faith to go to the next level. And uh, ironically, that happened to my mom just recently. She's 83, and we just got home in, J in July, and uh, she was, uh, she tried to grab a chair and missed it, and she fell back and uh, didn't really fall hard, but then she rolled back on her back, and we ran in there to see if she was okay. And uh, she said, I'm okay. And, and uh, so I said, Mom, let, let me help you up. She couldn't get up. And so she said, uh, I'm not sure you can pick me up. <laughs> uh, I was like, helped her get up, and, and uh, you know, I just... As long as God will give me strength, I want to be the one to help others and not be the one that has to be helped. And as long as God will allow that. And so, you know, the Great Commission assumes that we're going to go. As you are going, make disciples. Have, see people follow me. And uh, then, you know, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then teach them all the things of God's word. And you know what the Lord says? I'm with you. I'm right there with you. 
wherever you go in this world. You know, the gospel is not intuitive. You can't think up the gospel. How are they going to believe unless they've heard? They can, you can never just think up, oh, the gospel. Somebody told it to us. And we're talking this morning about an obedient faith, not just, okay, I believe that plane will take off. I'm not getting on it, but I believe it will take off. But an obedient faith. By faith, Abraham obeyed. And uh, just a little bit of motivation. You know when you do what the Lord wants you to do? That he gives you a joy in your heart. And Nehemiah said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And so we see that there's a lot of whys. I want you to see how. If you'll turn to 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 34 through 37. One of the favorite stories in the Bible. Famous story in the Bible. Um, you know, Philistines, Israelites, they're facing each other in battle, but a nine-foot giant is taunting them, and they're to send out one person to fight him. And David, he's a shepherd, and his father says, hey, take this food up to your brothers and uh, give a little bit to the captains, the leaders there. So, you know, it's interesting, if you read that story, he leaves the sheep with a keeper, and obviously he taught them, he worked himself out of a job, taught them what he was doing, but uh, he goes up there, he's asking questions, who is that guy, why isn't anyone going out there to fight him? Obviously he said, I'll take on that guy, I can do it, and it got back to Saul, and so he's called in to see King Saul. In verse 34 to 37, it says, And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of the mouth, out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by the beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them. Seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God, David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of this hand of the Philistine. And Saul said, Go, and the Lord be with thee. Now, here's the theological exclamation that I want to share with you this morning about that story. Wow. Can you believe it? I mean, he, he is like not on my watch. He was faithful with his father's sheep. And uh, a mundane thing, nobody wants to be a shepherd. But he's out there and he's learning the music. He already knows music. He's singing to God. He's probably practicing with his sling. And uh, he's, uh, he's watching over his father's sheep. And he's training others to do the same. A bear, a lion comes he grabs one of the little baby sheep or the sheep and pulls it. He goes after it. He's not like, well, there's one down. I'm not t- chasing that lion. But he, he goes after that thing. And when if he saves the sheep, and if that lion comes after him, he grabs it and kills it, clubs it, whatever he does. Can you imagine that? He's going after that lion. And I, I, I don't know that I would do that. Maybe with a rifle. But he obviously didn't have a weapon like that. God put David through some very difficult exercises, exercising his faith and, uh, to, so that he could serve at a higher level. I want you to see several things in that story. First, that experience or that exercise gave him a confidence, gave him this confidence in the Lord Gave him confidence in his ability, not not overconfident or arrogant, but he was very confident. You know, he goes out there and he he goes right out there and he says, hey, I'll do it. I've already I've already tackled a lion and a bear. Goliath's no problem. I'll go out there. I mean, he's already he's already gone through this. He's already gone to the lion, through the bear. He said, I can do Goliath. I mean, no one's praying for him. No one's saying, hey, you can do it. 
No one's encouraging him. In fact, his brothers go, get back to the sheep. You're just goofing off. And Saul says, you're just a kid. He's a mighty warrior. There's no way you're going to take him on. And uh, Goliath, when he sees David, he's, he mocks him. Oh, this is all the best you can do. This is the best you can send. And David goes right out there. No, when you, when you began to exercise this, this gets too easy. You go on to the next one. You, there's a confidence. I can go to the next one. I saw God saw me through here. I can go to the next one. James chapter 1 verse 22 says that we're to be a doer of God's word, not just a hearer only. Matthew chapter 7 verse 24 in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, if you hear my words and do what I say, you'll be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. When the rains come, rains of life, when the winds of life come, when the floods come up, you're going to stand, you're going to be still standing. You're going to be like that wise person. And so we see here, you know, in, in the West, we kind of have a saying that we read the Bible like this. They read the Bible like this. I'll do that. I'll do that. You know, I want you to also see that David kind of says at the beginning, I did this. I killed the lion. I killed the bear. But then at the end, he said, God killed the lion. God killed the bear. He kind of puts them both together. Spurgeon said, how did Goliath get killed? Well, you might say David did it. Nope, not without God. Okay, God did it. Nope, not without David. He put both. You know, isn't that amazing that God wants to use us? He wants to use us for his service and uh, just to tell people about the Lord. You know, David knew that the Lord was right there with him. He knew, I'm going to go out there because God is right here with me. And, you know, the person in our life that, well, I read this. Most people hear no more than yes in their life. They hear no so many times. You can't do it. No, that's not for you. Don't do that. And uh, more than they hear, yes, that's for you. You can do that. Yes. And uh, you know what? You know, in my life, the person that says no and you can't do it more than anyone is me. I tell myself that more than anybody. Chris, you, you can't do that. You're going to embarrass yourself. Don't do that. It's too hard. And... Uh, we have to be careful what we say to ourselves because God says you can do it. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. How did he know God was with him? He was actually out there writing. He was actually out there singing to God and uh, not even knowing it that God was using him to write part of the Bible. And he, he may have had to go back through and read some of the Psalms that he wrote and said, wow, this is amazing. God is using me to write scripture. In Psalms chapter 23, it says, For thou art with me. One of the things that I started getting on YouTube University and looking about guys that exercise, one of the things that I missed all these years, and I thought, well, if I just do some push-ups and some pull-ups, I'm going to look like that poster of Rocky. Nope. And uh, I found this out that 80% of bodybuilding starts in the kitchen. And uh, that's one thing I missed. And for David, he was a man after God's own heart. He feasted on God's word. He was writing God's word and writing songs to God's word. You know, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. He had a constant diet. Some, sometimes the people in... And uh, where we are, they'll come to me and we have a problem and they'll say, I have a problem. And I always want to ask them, are you reading God's word? Do you, do you open up the Bible and read? Yeah. Well, no, I haven't been reading. Why? You could do that for ju just read five Psalms and a Proverbs every day. Just a few minutes a day. Start feeding and eating God's word. And then I want you to see the last part of that chapter. You don't, have to, you don't have to turn there, but if you read all the way down there, 
After he killed Goliath, he still held the, his head in his hand. <laughs> Down in verse 52, he still got Goliath's head after he chopped it off. It's still in his hand. And uh, he also puts uh, Goliath's armor in his own tent. And maybe for testimony and to see where God brought him from, that uh, he would go back to his tent. Maybe he had some bear heads hanging on the wall, some lion heads. And he said, I remember where I was when God helped me to, to take care of that lion that was going to kill the sheep. And when God helped me take care of that bear. And then here's Goliath, his head. There's his armor. And so in David's spiritual workout, and God was putting him through the test. I mean, here's, here's the bear. Here's the lion. And then here was Goliath. And so he kept on he kept on growing. Psalm 78, verse 72, the Bible says, I took David from the, being a shepherd and I made him the king of Israel, strengthening David. David was, he was going through these exercises to get strong, to protect the sheep and kill Goliath and then lead as a king. You know, when I, was, when I was five years old, my parents started, uh, they were both musicians, and they said, I, I want you to learn the play, to play the piano. And uh, I started practicing. They got me other teachers, and, and uh, it, you can ask Annie. We grew up together. I played all through our high school when it wasn't so cool for a guy to play the piano, but I still wanted to serve the Lord in that way. I can remember when I was uh, just 12 years old in South Florida, the grass grows all year. And I was able to get a job at that time uh, mowing a lawn, and I made $10 a week. And uh, for the first missions conference, I felt like the Lord said, I want you to give $5 a week. I was like, okay, that would be, that would be great. I got caught up in the missions conference, and, and then a dollar of that would be tithe. So I was left with four dollars, and and after a week, I was like, "Wow, that's not much." I'm left with only four dollars, but you know, God was just helping me to exercise my faith. And you know what God did? He gave me more lawns to mow, and uh, he kept people kept saying, "Hey, come mow my lawn, come mow my lawn." And I heard the story that uh, a man was out of gas, and he was a believer. He was a preacher, in fact, and he said, I need to get to the next meeting. And uh, he prayed, and a $20 bill was, fl was just floating in the wind and by the grass. And I was like, God, can you do that for me? I, I'm a, I want a $20 bill floating down. And uh, he said, I'll give you another yard to mow. <laughs> just kind of exercising our faith. When I was a senior in high school, my parents, you know, kind of guiding us always to serve the Lord. My mom was teaching piano lessons, and um, she said, I want you to get your pilot's license. And, uh, you know, I'd never know how God can use that. And she was reading books like Nate Saint and, you know, and Jim Elliott and all those things. And she thought, maybe our son will be able to do that and got my pilot's license. And, and again, they were just kind of helping me exercise to go to the next level and serve that the next way. When we got to the place where we are now, uh, we started learning the language. And after four years, we had a young lady in our home. She came from day one. She was helping Annie in the market. She helped us around our home. And uh, after four years, we learned the language so-so. I think it took us about seven years to really understand and to be more, we would say, fluent. I don't even know that I'm fluent today. I learn a new word every day. But uh, we, she came to us and she said, I want to believe what you believe. And uh, she, we never really forced it. We didn't, you know, uh, the people where we serve, they're so polite. They don't want us to lose face. They would say whatever we wanted them to say. But I wanted it to be from them that God was working in their heart. Yeah. So we used the words we knew, led her to the Lord. And uh, she had seen our dirty floors, our disagreements, our dirty laundry. And uh, that was a miracle. She said, I want to believe what you believe. 
And I just had to talk to you today about if we were ever put in jail or, you know, getting in trouble for the gospel, I have a good answer for him. I think God has kind of exercised our faith to a point that uh, we're making better citizens for your country. I mean, a person that comes to know the Lord and they have the fruit of the Spirit, I mean, who is going to make a law against a guy who has more patience or a guy who's loving or a guy who's gentle or who's going to make a law against that? So that was my answer. God is kind of preparing us in case that would happen. So I, I just challenge you as a church, maybe you need to start here. And often God starts our faith in our giving, and then we start serving. But maybe you're here in another level. You're right here. And uh, you can go to this level. Maybe it's right here. Who knows? Maybe God's stretching you and uh, helping you to exercise. You can find your giftedness in whatever service here at the church and uh, ask your pastor where, the, where you can serve. And I'll end on this, because David is a type of Jesus in our life. He is a type of Jesus. And somehow, in God's wisdom, and, and uh, Jesus subjected himself to the likeness of humanity. He came down here, and he was like you and I, as a human, 100% God. But in Luke chapter 2, verse 52, it says, Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. He was also exercising and going to that next level. You know, Jesus went to the cross for us. He defeated our Goliath, which was sin and the guilt and the weight of sin and our ultimate Goliath is death. He defeated Goliath for us in giving us new life. Jesus is our ultimate trainer to help us to exercise. Remember, he is right there with you wherever you go. What could you do if you knew Jesus was standing right here? He is. He's standing right here with us. He loves and values each one of you. Each one of us, he wants to use us and use us in a great way. And then he wants you to love and value others around the world. And I just, I ask you, not, not for me, you've already done that for 30 years, but for these missionaries and missionaries to come, that you continue to serve and grow to the next level that God can use you. I'm going to have a word of prayer for you and then turn it over to your pastor can I do that? Father, thank you so much for Battlefield Baptist Church, their influence in my life, my wife's life, our ministry for the past 30 years, their faithfulness. Thank you so much. I pray your blessings this morning as you deal with our heart. Help us to start exercising. And those of us that have exercised, we can go to the next level. I pray a great blessing on this morning and and uh, each person that is here, we just thank you again. In Jesus' name, amen. We're just going to sing a short song of invitation. I'd ask you to continue to have your hearts focused upward. Service is not over. I'd ask that you please use this time as an opportunity Maybe you and your wife, maybe you, sir, you, ma'am, maybe a young person. You've been praying over this past month. We've been talking a lot about faith. You've been praying about how you'll exercise your faith today. You know, uh, Pastor Skinner used to say this all the time, and I always thought it was good. A moment of decision is worth a year of aimless planning. That was the problem with the church at Corinth. They had said one thing, but for a year they had been aimlessly planning how they were going to give. But the Macedonians, the ones who had nothing, the ones who were poor, the ones who literally couldn't give, decided, you know what, we're going to give ourselves to the Lord. And after they gave themselves to the Lord, they said, you know what, we're going to do something for the Lord. 
And the Bible records what took place. And the gospel went into the regions beyond. At this church, we've been privileged for over 40 years to send the gospel into the regions beyond. By the way, we send our faith promise as a church out in advance. I don't know, I haven't polled all the missionaries, but I believe we're probably one of the only churches that send the entire annual amount in advance, and then we wait to see how God responds through our people to restore the coffers, so to speak. And so today's a very different day, a very special day, but I would be remiss if we didn't have an opportunity just to go to the Lord in prayer. Maybe you have something that you need to praise the Lord for. Maybe you're struggling this morning. There's something that you need to take to the th throne of God's grace right now. Maybe, maybe there's a relationship that needs to be mended, and you and your heart need to offer forgiveness to someone. Extend that, or maybe you need to receive that forgiveness from somebody. Whatever is the Lord has laid upon your heart, we're just going to sing this song of invitation, and then we're going to continue with the most exciting part, I think, today and that will be the exercising of our faith. Let's sing together as we have this time of invitation. I'm laying down my life. I'm giving up control. I'm never looking back. I surrender all. I'm living for your glory. This passion in my heart, this stirring in my soul, to see the nations bow, for all the world to know, I'm living for your glory on the earth. For the sake of the world, burn a fire in me, light a flame in my soul for every eye to see. For the sake of the world, burn like a fire in me. This passion in my heart, this stirring in my soul. you I'm gonna ask you to be seated just for a moment of time and uh, the gentlemen have 
held up a card a couple of different times, and if Faith Promise is new to you, uh, this is how we budget our missions giving. I know some churches set it up differently, but this is how we know uh, we trust by faith that God is going to provide what we commit to give to Him, and He takes pleasure when we follow through with our commitments, and that's a whole other message. Uh, but on this card, you'll see on the left-hand side, it says, when your faith is increased, that we shall be enlarged by you to preach the gospel in the regions beyond. Obviously, this comes from 2 Corinthians in chapter 10 and verse 15 and 16. This was the Apostle Paul reminding that church at Corinth who had aimlessly planned for a year to give. He said, no, listen, he says, when you actually step out by faith, when you actually uh, walk by faith and not by sight, we're going to be able to share the gospel. We're going to be able to go into the regions beyond you. And certainly, if you know the context of the passage, he was finishing up probably the longest passage that Paul actually talks about this type of giving when referencing the, the impoverished Jewish church, the, the needy Christians in Jerusalem. And what was crazy was the Gentile churches were the ones that gave willingly and sacrificed because they gave themselves to the Lord. And this card has a perforation. And on the left side, it says, my faith promise. We typically ask you, and this is, and I'll ask you today, to make your faith promise for a weekly amount. And there's amounts on here ranging already prefab. You can check or color in from $1 up to $100. There's a box that says other amounts because the Lord has richly blessed some of you. you. You might use that block. And then underneath it says Sunday school class. And then down below it says increased my faith promise or first time participating. Now, the one thing I would say is if you plan to make it a monthly gift, then write in that opening spot that it is per month. If you're going to follow through, we typically do, my wife and I give weekly to Faith Promise. By the way, I don't ask you to do something that I don't do. We've been blessed to give. I could tell you the first time that we ever gave to Faith Promise, it wasn't because I wanted to step out by faith. It was because my wife challenged me to step out by faith. And I remember that first year that I gave, we didn't have it. And I knew we didn't have it. And I thought she was a crazy woman. I still think she's a crazy woman, but I love her with all of my heart. The reality is, some of you have heard this testimony, we added it up, and that first year my faith promise for the whole year amounted to, it was a little bit over $1,400. We didn't really do the math, we just figured out the weekly amount, and it came up to a little over $1,400. And I thought, man, this is crazy. This is, this, is, this is ludicrous. What are they talking about over the church? Is that a cult? What are they doing? And a few days later, I was humbled when I walked to the mailbox. My wife will remember this. I walked to the mailbox, and I got a letter from the Defense Finance and Accounting Service. Well, when you're active duty, that's not a good thing. I don't care whether you're an officer or an enlisted man. But especially if you're an enlisted man, it's not a good thing because typically if you receive something from the DFAS, as its acronym, uh, it is either saying no pay due, you owe us money. <laughs> yes, that happens to military members. You owe us money. We overpaid you. And so I'm like, ugh, what do they want? Couldn't it get worse? I just... We just gave to Faith Promise. And I opened up the envelope, and it was a check for $1,465. I immediately got nervous. Why are they sending me $1,465? And at the moment, I hadn't remembered that our Faith Promise commitment was about $1,420 or so. That year was a little bit under that. And the very next day, I went to the finance and accounting office. And I walked in. I said, we have a problem. 
And they said, what's the problem? I said, this letter came to my house, and I said, I've never received a check from the government. <laughs> it's a new thing these past couple of years. Never received a check from the government. And I said, I'm nervous because if you're giving me money now, next month you're going to send me one of those no-pay-due status uh, envelopes, and my wife and I are going to have nothing this next month. And they looked it up on the system, and they said, it's not a mistake. That money is for you because we have failed to pay your clothing and equipment allowance for the past four years. I hadn't recognized that. Obviously, I hadn't paid attention to my leave and earning statements. And I didn't realize that God was just using that to remind me that He is greater than anything I could ever do. By the way, we were able to pay our faith promise that year, and we still had enough money to go out to dinner. Amen? So I encourage you today, don't be concerned about the, the amount. Be more concerned with, am I exercising faith? Am I like that widow that Jonathan talked about that gave two mites? When the Lord sat over against the treasury and he watched all that processed and all that gave in, and he looked at that woman and he said, I'm telling you the truth, that she has given more than all. I believe it wasn't about the two mites, it was because the woman gave her entire heart to the Lord. And so what we're going to do is you'll have this card come to you. Young people, we have a card for you as well. Where are they? They've moved on me. Sorry, I, I moved them myself. I couldn't remember. I'm getting old. You say, what are you doing with the gloves? I'm protecting you. See how much I love you? I'm protecting you. This is the young person's card. It goes young people from five cents up to a dollar and then it has a box that you could fill out. Maybe you'd be like Brother Chris. Say, you know, I'll start with five dollars. Whatever. So I'm going to ask Tyler if you, will, if you will hold on to these. This will be what I ask you. All our young people, uh, if you want to receive a card here in a second, I'll ask Tyler to give it. And then the adult packs, there's one for each missionary in a rubber band. Um, and what I'm going to ask is I'm going to ask the missionaries now to come out. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand, and they're going to pass out the card so that everybody gets a faith promise card. All right? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask uh, uh, Jason Taylor, if you would come here in just a second, one of our trustees, I'm going to ask you to pray over the faith promise offering. And then after he prays, I'll ask you to fill in your amount uh, for faith promise this year. And then we'll collect those cards. And then we're going to praise the name of the Lord our God. Amen. And so let's do this. Missionaries, would you stand up? Everybody raise your hand. You want a faith promise card? We're going to be passing out the faith promise cards. And let's be excited as we do it. Amen.
Raise your hand so they could see you. For the sake of the world, burn like a fire in me. Light a flame in my soul for every eye to see. For the sake of the world, burn like a fire in me. This passion in my heart, this stirring in my soul, to see the nations bow. For all the world to know, I'm living for your glory on the earth. And for the sake of the world, burn like a fire in me, light a flame in my soul for every eye to see. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. Uh, we thank you for this opportunity to participate uh, in, in your in your missions, Lord. And uh, Lord, just uh, thank you for just all the things that, that you've been able to do through this church for the last 40 years, Lord, to, to just further that mission, further your kingdom. Uh, Lord, I just pray that... Uh, that we've prayerfully considered uh, our part this year. Uh, Lord, I just pray that uh, uh, that uh, if, if we do not increase it after what we've heard here this morning, Lord, that, uh, that we'll meet that commitment. Lord, I just uh, pray that as a church that, uh, that we can follow through on our promise this year, uh, Lord, or even exceed it like we uh, were, were able to do this past year, Lord. Lord, I thank you for this church. I thank you for the leadership. Uh, Lord, I thank you for the vision that you've given our staff. And uh, Lord, I just pray that... Uh, You'll just be with all of us to, to live up to the commitment that we've made, Lord. And uh, Lord, just thank you for these missionaries that, that we've been uh, blessed to uh, host this year. Uh, Lord, I just pray that uh, they'll, they'll all be able to get to their fields uh, faster than what they've thought. Uh, Lord, I thank you for the, the report that we've heard. And uh, Lord, I just pray that uh, this year we'll, uh, we'll be able to stretch our faith. And uh, Lord, we just, we just love you and just ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're watching online... You should uh, have access now at this time to the online faith promise card. And so I'd ask you to fill it out at this time and submit that. Everyone in this room, if you've not filled out your card, go ahead and do it at this time. Amen? All right. And when you're finished filling out your card, take off that tab and hold it high in the air. Hold it up high in the air. And then I'm going to have Tyler, all of our missionary guests, once your hands start going up, go around and pick up their cards uh, high up in the air. Amen? Be excited about it. Amen? Amen. Like, like I'm going to be like Brother Don. Start giggling. Start laughing. Hilarious. All right? Amen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don. All right. <laughs> High up. Don needs some help over. The reason he's laughing, he needs some help collecting these cards. Keep them high. Keep them high. If you're, there you go. Be excited. <laughs> Don. Here you go, Chris. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Amen. And uh, is that all? Do we have all the faith promise commitment cards for this year from this morning? Okay, I want to do this. I'm going to give these cards. Jason, would you, would you come and get these? Uh, I'm going to turn these back over. Uh, to our trustees, they will be counting uh, the amount 
uh, this afternoon and Lord willing this evening. We'll have a preliminary number. We'll see if we can check online. Those that have done their faith promise commitment cards online, we'll try and see if we can check that and get that all put together. And then this evening when we come back uh, for our candlelight service, we'll try to have a preliminary number uh, of our faith promise commitment for this upcoming year. I do want to celebrate. I always say, you know, sometimes I, I don't get as excited as about the commitment as I do about the fulfillment of faith. And uh, this past year, I don't know if you know this, but this past year our church committed $318,000 to faith promise commitment. This year, as of last Sunday, not even as of today's giving, as of last Sunday, we were at three hundred and twenty-four thousand four forty-eight and seven cents, and so we praise the Lord. We praise the Lord. I praise the Lord that COVID or nothing were going to stop our faith promise commitment from reaching the regions beyond and our ability to support missionaries all around the world. And there are people who are hurting. And so I think it would be appropriate, and I ask them to do it. So if you don't like the song, you come at me. I love this song. And so let's stand and sing this song, Oh, Praise the Name, as we close our service. Be back tonight, 5 o'clock, candlelight service. We can't do it without you. God bless you. I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet my Savior on that cursed tree his body bound and drenched in tears they laid him down in joseph's tomb the entrance sealed by heavy stone messiah still and all
Amen. Well, our missionaries are going to be out in the lobby. They're going to be at their tables. Um, take time to love on them, to talk with them. But please, please, please be back tonight. Please be back tonight at 5 p.m. for our candlelight service. It's one of my favorite things that we do. Um, and like Pastor said, we can't do it without you. It's going to be really, really dark. <laughs> physically and, and, and maybe also spiritually. If you're not here, we need you. We need you to be here. Uh, so we look forward to seeing you tonight at 5 p.m. right back in this room for our candlelight service. Uh, have a great afternoon. We'll see you tonight.